Banka Sharma, EVP at Schneider Electric, thank you for joining us at Economy Middle East. Thank you. Given the growing emissions from data centers, what are the biggest challenges and opportunities for achieving sustainability in this sector? You know, the growing demand of data centers, especially in the AI environment, what it does is it increases the compute, the need for compute dramatically. When you think about the GPUs, the graphic processing units which I use today, they need a lot more, they create a lot more compute. Now what that does is you need obviously, while the GPUs are super efficient, you also still need more electricity, which means more energy, but you also need more cooling. Cooling as in how do you cool down all these servers which have GPUs inside. So from a sustainability point of view, it is imperative that we think about what kind of technologies, what kind of softwares, what kind of services are going to be delivered so that we can still be building sustainable data centers while there is this massive growth happening in the compute led because of the data centers need for AI. Schneider Electric has been a leader in sustainable data center solutions. Can you share some of the company's latest innovations and their impact? So a couple of points which I'd like to make. Yes, so first of all, Schneider's been in the business of data centers for almost three decades now. Uh, it's it's a, it's a large part of our company. We work with the, some of the largest customers, whether they're hyperscalers, co-location companies, enterprises, etc. Now, when you think about the technologies which are needed to be more and more sustainable, we start with hardware. So think about powertrain and think about the cooling technologies. So I'll give you some examples in the powertrain. We have in the powertrain, you have medium voltage switch gear. The medium voltage switch gear we use as a company works on air. Unlike some of the other companies which works on SF6, which is a very bad gas for the environment. Other example I'll give you is uh, when you think about the cooling systems, we have patented technologies like the deconstructed chillers, which are specially made for the AI environments. So that's on the technology part on hardware. On the software side, we use digital twin through our softwares like ETAP, like RIB. So the idea there is that you're able to perceive what could be the challenges in a real environment through a digital twin, through a digital twin, and you're able to actually manage it better. And then finally, we have services all around. We have something called EcoCare, where we're able to provide a one-stop shop, including software, hardware, all of that, for all of our customers in, in every single part of their solution. So those are some of the things we should do on technologies. On top of that, we have a sustainability business division. What that division does is they actually work with our clients and helps them set up their sustainability goals. And they work across industries. And we have software there called the, the Source Advisor, which actually helps these companies to know what are their carbon emissions, how they can manage their scope one, two, and their scope three. And then we provide them solutions so that they can get better and get on their sustainability mission. What are your predictions for the future of data center sustainability in the context of the growing demand for computing power? You know, that's actually a very, very good question. And I sometimes worry when, when I have a question on prediction. Look, I mean, I can only tell you what I know. I've been in this industry for more than two decades now. I've seen all the uh, the, uh, the the rises and falls, starting with enterprise data centers, the co-locations, the, the e-commerce, then we had blockchain, then we had metaverse, and now we have AI. So look, today, when you think about the data center industry, the carbon emission is around 2%, which may seem small but it's equal to the airline industry. So it's, it's a pretty substantial. With this substantial growth in the AI space, we have to continue to put in the effort to reduce the carbon emissions. Now, the example I gave earlier on technologies, both on hardware, software, and services, technologies are available today. If we collectively, as, as a team overall, when you think about not just Schneider, all the companies, all the academia, all the, all the uh, public uh, organizations, all the governments, etc., if we put in the effort, to make sure that we continue to build these data centers, but continue to focus on using the right technologies so that we can continue to reduce carbon emissions. I think we have a very, very bright future ahead, a future where we can utilize AI to make our lives simpler and better and even more intelligent, but we can also focus on reducing carbon emissions from these data centers. Pankaj Sharma, thank you for your time.